So um, thank you everyone for joining Lights On, a post-screening conversation with uh, Malavika Saruka and Sumantra Ghoshal, director of The Unseen Sequence, exploring Bharatanatyam through the art of Malavika Sarukai, produced by Cinematics. When Ms. Sarukai reached out to Alap, we were absolutely delighted and honored at the possibility of being able to share this film with a larger universe, because we do believe honestly that films like these must be seen not just once, but over and over again, because every now and then we all need our doses of inspiration. This film for me personally is just that and I'm not even a dancer. When Ms. Sarukai called us and, taught, and shared this idea, you know, I asked her almost instantly, like what really triggered her decision to share this film, um, you know, on the digital platform, especially at this time. And I love her response. And I'm going to take just a moment to read it and share it with all of you. She said, pandemic is no longer simply a word today. It is a lived experience the world over. Self-isolation and social distancing have served to create an unnatural environment. In this environment, the arts become even more precious to each one of us for they provide a lifeline. The world of dance bridges distance across geographies, cultures, boundaries. The Unseen Sequence, as you all know, has been showcased at prestigious venues and festivals across the world and has earned for itself praise and accolades aplenty. It was chosen by the New York Times critic Alistair Macaulay as one of the three best films in the Dance on Camera Festival at the Lincoln Center in January 2014. Writing about the film, Macaulay says, the camera revealingly shifts from close up to long shot, showing the rich, multi-directionality of Bharatanatyam and above all the singular way a great Indian dancer visibly subordinates the self to a sense of something far larger. I also want to share one little paragraph that uh, eminent dance critic Shanta Gokhale wrote in the Mumbai Mirror. Amongst the many things she said, uh, the one paragraph that really caught my attention was, Ghoshal's camera watches unobtrusively and then moves on. It records her performances, observes her rehearsals, reveals her teaching methods, traces the history of the dance through interviews, photographs and archival footage. Intermittently it pauses, letting Ghoshal probe the dancer's mind. What does dance mean to her? How does she resolve the choreographic problems she poses to herself? How does she answer the inner compulsion that urges her to connect the material world to the metaphysical world through her dance? We're really hoping to be able to chat with the director and the artist and get some insights into the film and its making. We're also going to be throwing the floor open to questions. So please feel free to share your comments, questions on the chat box on Facebook and uh, we will relay to the artist and the director and get you their responses. Thank you so much once again for joining in. And thank you so much Malvika Ji and Shumantra Ji for being of this session. We're really so excited to be able to do this with you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you. Akila. Thank you, Allah. Um, I'm gonna firstly ask you about, um, you know, uh, I'm just curious about how you sort of shape the narrative of the film. Shumantra Ji, I'm going to first ask you the question. And did it organically become a film on dance through the lens of Malavika Sarukai? Or was the premise just that right from the very beginning itself? Could you tell us how it all began? I'm, I'm not sure what you mean by the lens of Malavika Sarukai because unfortunately or fortunately, she wasn't near the lens. She was in front of it. And the way this film uh, sort of unfolded in real time while I was making it, and in the way that I've made some other films as well, and which is why I've probably made so few, because it requires a great deal of trust on the part of whoever I'm making it with, um, is that they don't really get to know what I'm doing. She, she, didn't, she didn't really know what I was up to. I shared, uh, I shared nothing with her. And then one day I showed her the film. And the fact that uh, we are still here seven years later talking to each other is my greatest 
tribute, I suppose. Um, but, but did it grow organically to come to the other part of your question? Yes, of course. I think, um, again, the way I make films, um, and again, perhaps why I make so few apart from laziness, is that yes, it is a long and organic process. And it happens over time, and it happens with the intensity developing over time. Um, we'll talk more about that, but uh, let, let Malavika react to the genesis of the project. That would be great, yeah. It really came as a surprise. And as Mantra uh, just mentioned, I really didn't know what he was shooting and how he was going to put it together. I was in the frame and we'd have, you know, we, he never asked me in, in the form of an interview, you know, we just had conversations. So that used to kind of just, you know, spread and we had leisure to, you know, be in conversation. But I never questioned that. I never asked him like, what is your concept? What is the flow? How is it going to be? Or how am I going to be? seen you know in your film and it was really about a year or so of just filming and you know traveling because of most of the performances were shot you know in like in performance that was the it was not really made for the camera itself only one or two scenes so it was um i was delighted and humbled and um I don't know, I just felt so, I felt really humbled about dance itself when I saw it. It, it. The first time, you know, it was just that, okay, the film is ready and we had a very small premiere with just three or four people. It, it really blew me away, not because of my dance, but because of what dance was saying. I didn't know I could even articulate so much. I really didn't. And I said, oh, okay. You know, but it was um, it was remarkable. My only um, regret was that my mother couldn't see it. Yeah, yeah, I wish she had seen. It. Yeah, but otherwise it was just splendid, and I'm so thankful that uh, he made the film. Yeah, <laughs> really. Yeah, I particularly like that one scene in the film where the three of you are in the garden and chatting. And you ask her, like, yeah. you enjoy being at the helm? Do you like being a manager? And, you know, I just love her response. Yeah. Um, so I, I had this question actually scheduled for later, but you talked about trust. And I'm uh, uh, just kind of curious about, you know, the friendship that you both perhaps shared and what's the kind of friendship that you developed as you went along and the friendship that has sort of, you know, stayed with you for like over the years now. Um, uh, Malvika ji, you could probably respond like, did you know Shimantra ji before? And like, so how did you trust, you know, sharing your dance with them? Um, um... I think, you know, we met because uh, we had common friends um, who, were, and they were really instrumental for, you know, getting us together. You know, otherwise I am in Chennai, he's in Mumbai, our worlds are different. And um, it happened quite um, easily because, uh, and uh, fluently. At some point, you know, we had met, we spoke about it and he said, about, he spoke to me about the film, he was thinking of making. And um, I just said, yes, okay. And I really hadn't seen all the films which he had already made, you know, and, on Zakir Hussein and things, I hadn't seen it, but I just felt I could trust him. And I think it's the honesty with which artists speak to each other, you know, which makes the bond of, you know, when you make yourself vulnerable in front of another artist, then you're really exposing yourself and saying, this is what I feel. And I think we were able to meet uh, at that level, which, which really helped, you know, the foundation. And then I think it just grew. You know, as we shot and filmed and spoke and interacted, and yeah, That's I leave it now to Sundar to see what he yeah. feels. Actually, I'm curious, Shimantraji, about you know this um, this this idea of trust between the director and uh, you know the actor, and um, you know why was it? It is really important for 
you know, for this sort of mutual trust that, that needs to kind of like exist, right? Could you talk about that, about how like, you know, you, you think, trust in you? Um, I think the trust is actually one-sided. I think it is the artist who trusts the filmmaker. Mm -hmm. And I think it's the filmmaker who needs to be very responsible with that trust. Mm -hmm. So I think on the one side there is trust and I will now tell you that uh, though Malavika in retrospect thinks she trusted me, she didn't at all. <laughs> and I don't blame her for it because when you're making a film on somebody's art, which they have been practicing for 50 years and their life, which they have lived for 58 or whatever it was, it wasn't, she wasn't uh, 58 then. What happens is that they don't have trust to start with. And we were not friends. We had met through mutual friends, but we were not friends and there was no need for trust. What she did have is instinct, which she talked about. She instinctively felt that, uh, that perhaps we were on the same wavelength. Trust is something that develops over time. It is something that is easily lost. Mm. Uh, and I think what happens is that trust can only be nurtured. It cannot, it cannot, uh, it cannot suddenly happen and stay amongst people who don't know each other. So yes, I gained that trust and to gain that trust, what did mm. I do? What I did was I confessed first my inexperience, my lack of knowledge, my, um, real fear in a way, uh, my hesitations. And I think that that vulnerability was what brought on a sense of trust because I wasn't bluffing. I wasn't conning her. Yeah. And therefore there was a feeling yeah. that perhaps I wouldn't uh, run away with her life and her art to suit my purpose. And a lot of the time that is what happens with film. Yeah. The filmmaker runs away with somebody else's art yeah. and somebody else's life Absolutely. to make um, his own point. And, and that's, there's nothing wrong with that. They're very good films as a result of that. I can't work that way, which is why it takes me a long time to make the film. But yes, the trust is something that happened over time. It did not happen immediately. And I could, I could see the gradual, incredibly gradual wearing <laughs> away of mistrust in a way and right. it's um, it's natural no, I think it's absolutely I would, I would say there was not there was no mistrust i think uh, it's not mistrust yeah. but there's kind of caution because you really don't know and i think um, you know you are very vulnerable when you're looked at through a camera <laughs> You know, and you feel very, yeah, very looked at, very perceived. And, uh, you know, and I think this initial stage, it requires a kind of um, patience also from the side of the artist to say, okay, what is the director doing? You know, and I think conversations helped greatly because outside the film, the conversations which sort of build the bridges, I think that, that made a huge difference for me. Yeah. Um, also, I think, you know, Akila, to just come back to this idea, of how a film, the kind of film I make develops. Right. Most people who, who make films sometimes do it on commission and do it to a very tight budget and all of that. And as a result, what happens is that there is a certain um, getting into a life and getting out of it because there's not the time that they have or the money that they have to spend. Right. I made the film over two and a half years. Malvika, is used to people, I think, who come in, make a film because she's important or shoot a dance and then move on to other things. This was intense. It was unrelenting. And I think the intensity of it and the fact that it, it went on unrelentingly for two years, two and a half years, and at a period when she was going through a really uh, critical time in her life because her mother was not well intensified the emotions uh, which were already there. But I think that is what engenders trust. The fact that I too can stay the course. I too am willing to spend that kind of time uh, yeah. because I respect you. I respect your art. I respect your life. So I'm not doing a, a quickie. Yeah, 
absolutely that's a fantastic point i've been like particularly curious about the about the title of the film i am, i want to know who came up with the title it's and it's so beautifully you know it's such a fantastic title um, who i mean i'm going to let uh, whoever pick the title to kind of respond to this question how did you kind of arrive at the title the unseen sequence well as i said um, malvika didn't have uh, anything really to do with the film except for being stupendously part of it um so i picked the title i chose the title and it came naturally it was one of the first things that is said in the film she talks of dance as being um a set of unseen sequences and i thought when i thought about not just dance but how art works in india uh, and particularly dance and i refer to it when i talk of um balam and you see the unseen sequences that she has set off people still are dancing yeah. dance that is uh that is nodding their head repeatedly at her and towards her and bowing their heads so that is a sequence that she set off without really realizing what she was doing and hence i think the there is a sequence that goes from malvika to maithili there is a sequence that goes from malvika to jyotsna and on because of the guru shishya parampara this is not a sequence perhaps that is there in a school but because of the intensity with which uh teaching is imparted that sequence lives and thrives in unseen ways and so i thought that it was a good idea to call it yeah it's a fantastic title yeah um the film uh, you know uh, begins and ends in chidambaram am i right yeah um, well, so uh, almost, the chidambaram yeah so almost coming full circle um you know i'm i'm curious um malvika ji if you tell me what is your relationship with that temple and also for me honestly like uh, just the idea of the temple went um I, mean, I i i was looking at it more than just a temple but for me it was like you know you often talked about how dance is like a prayer for you like almost like meditation so i thought of it i interpreted it like you know like the sort of um, singular constant pursuit of dance like a prayer but talk to us about your relationship with chidambaram and am i right in my interpretation of how dance is like almost a prayer for you <coughs> you know actually i think it's uh, become a kind of uh, you know i can call it a dynamic meditation it's become a prayer um but i didn't know it would become a prayer i didn't know that you know sublimation of the body for me as you know to make my body an instrument to serve another purpose you know to so i can connect by sublimation and you know by fine tuning it i can actually uh, connect to uh, some larger energies you know which was not something there are no goal posts in this you know you just go on and then you find that you're discovering something you see a glimmer a little bit of light somewhere and then you say okay i want to follow that so i think this thing of uh, dance being um it's a very austere practice for me um and and i need to really the bliss for me is to really not be me on the stage um mm. you know the joy for me is to find something else which is beyond me so i think it's been a long journey but chidambaram yes coming to speak about chidambaram you know when i was uh, growing up and of course my mother saroja kamak she was uh, she was deep pivot in my life as many people who followed my dance journey would know and as long as i can remember she spoke to me about chidam so as a young girl also i always heard the word chidam you know right and um, soon after my arangetram also i remember coming there to perform at chidam so it became a place of of repeated visits mm. uh, you know and um, somehow for me chidambaram when i was thinking about it it's not just a place but i it's really a state of mind it's more a state of mind what my associate with chidambaram so it could be 
just a space of 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 deep energy you know yeah. so i could call it chidambaram but i could think of so many things which are chidambaram for exactly but yeah but going yeah. back but going back to uh, chidambaram to you know uh, to celebrate my dance anniversary um was something i i felt instinctively i wanted to do you know i didn't want to dance in a big performance and have a lot of people watching me and you know applause and stuff like this somehow that i didn't wish to do that and the pilgrimage to chidambaram and um, you know dancing in front of sanctum sanctorum you know you are in the presence of another astounding energy um and that was that was enough you know so i think it's it's also my mother because she was um, she spoke to me a lot about shiva so i think you know all these things the influences it kind of goes inside the system and then you respond so i think that's why but it's yeah. fantastic because you know as a viewer um that energy kind of uh, i can feel that energy you know so i want to ask shimantra ji about Uh, you know it's one thing for the dancer to feel a certain energy uh, from a certain place or from a certain memory but to be able to translate that energy to the viewer uh, what is the kind of uh, process i don't even know if you know if you how um, like how do you how did you for example translate that particular scene that uh, that temple scene and make it so i think it's like for me that was like a really like a powerful scene in the film so could you talk about that scene and why you decided to actually begin the film with that scene well i began the film with that scene because i wanted to not um in this film not do a linear thing where i start with her birth then i go into her arangetram then i do you know I, i didn't want to tell a linear story i wanted to tell different stories the narratives were different there were three separate strands that i was putting together and i also wanted to do something called in media res which is to leap in to the essence of something immediately because i thought two things one is it would grab you and i yeah. hope that it would grab you and so i start with that huge big close up of malvika so it tells you this is going to be about this woman yeah but i also with that voice over tell you what about this woman is this film going to be it's not going to be only about her it's going to be about darshan it's going to be about the spiritual and it's going to be about a journey which i will now take you on and i think that journey for me um, was epitomized because of her relationship with shiva because of her relationship by her mother to chidambaram and all of that i think chidambaram epitomized and distilled in a way what she felt about dance more than any other piece of dance i think being in that environment for malvika being in that presence for her and dancing that on that particular day was a both a milestone as well as in a sense an epiphany so it it uh, that's what i hoped for and which is why it's a long bit i don't i i i again it's it's a dangerous thing to start with a dance that's that's so long before you've told anything else about the person but you take these risks um because you have no one really to answer to except yourself so one goes ahead and takes the risk uh, but one does right. it with a sense of responsibility it's not just one one does it unthinkingly as you can see one thinks about uh, most things i hope absolutely one does so that's why i started yeah. with chidam it was absolutely. also the most difficult thing we ever shot it was agonizingly difficult because when we went there there was no light we were not allowed to place cameras anywhere we felt we had not rehearsed we didn't have enough people manning cameras so i shot with five cameramen but three people attending to those cameras which is why the camera shakes at some point there were people milling about going up and down it it was uh, it 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 i i don't wish that shoot on anyone it was um, agonizing but i think it worked yeah, and, and it that's what we did for us yeah <laughs> no and i think you know akila for me uh luckily i was blissfully unaware of anything that sumantra was going through 
I had no idea. I just wanted to dance. And it was especially um, intense because it was a dance anniversary and my mother wasn't with me, which was actually very, very, very painful to, to experience. Um, she was in Chennai and I was away. But I just thought that, you know, what she would really want me to do is dance. So I said, okay. And my friend said, you should go and dance in Chidamram, go ahead and dance. And I felt that I was there and dancing in front of the Sanctum Sanctorum, it was like I was personally speaking to some other energies. And so no one ex existed for me. I didn't worry about the people around me. I didn't know what was happening to the cameras. I just didn't see anybody. I only saw yeah. this Sanctum yeah. You know, and so it was a very, very, very personal and very intense. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, it was very intense. Absolutely. Um, you know, uh, Shamatra, you shared this uh, really interesting story now of how agonizing it was to shoot that scene. I'm curious, and I'm sure like people who are, who have logged in would like to know some of the you know some of the scenes that were really difficult to shoot, and I'd like to listen to you know, um, uh, Malvika ji, if you can also tell us like some of the you know, like in this scene, you said you completely kind of tuned out and you tuned in and you were only like focused on, you know, this, this other energy. But I'm sure there were other scenes in the film that were, that were difficult for you to perform. So I'd like to know from Shumantraji, what, what, what were the scenes that were tough to shoot? What were the scenes that were difficult? You know, I, I, I don't think that there was anything else that was as difficult as Chidambaram. The point, uh, you know, because uh, this film is also made with very, uh, few resources. It's amazing how few people actually worked on the film behind the scenes. I had an editor and assistant, Archana Ayer, who helped me make that film. But apart from her, there was, and there was a cameraman, uh, Vijay Khambati, who came along, but it was a very, very um, sort of uh, tight team. But nothing was as difficult because nothing was as unmanageable. I, I decided that I would shoot all the dances um, as staged performances, which made it more manageable because there was a bit of rehearsal time. You knew what she was going to dance, stuff like that. Uh, so this was a really unmanageable bit, which was a surprise for me. Uh, and I don't want to make this documentary sound like a series of agonizing instances. It wasn't. But that particular shoot <laughs> was... <laughs> the rest was actually no, great. Like, is there one particular scene um, that you remember that was particularly special? You know, Malvika Ji, is there one particular scene in the entire film that you that you kind of love the most? I think for me, you know, it was um, actually the first thing um, um, Sumantra sort of shot was uh, this Astam Gato Ravihi, which is uh, done when I'm dancing at home and my mother is in the frame as well. And uh, because when he came to Chennai, he just said, you know, why dance whatever you feel like dancing. And um, I just said, okay, Astam Gato, because that is very, very, I'm very, very close to that piece. It's a very personal piece in uh, composition in many ways. And I think dancing that, because it's not about uh, Shringaram, it's about loss, it's about uh, death, um, it's about uh, an old woman uh, at, in, on the hearts of at Varanasi. And I think for me to expose myself in, and be vulnerable in front of the camera right away, like when we began the shoot, and um, not have any sort of decorative elements, you know, which I could, uh, I could sort of hide behind because it's simpler when you have uh, Shringaram and some decorations and it's so much easier to, to dance them than to sort of strip yourself of uh, everything and beauty and uh, talk about the lament of an old woman. So I think for me dancing that, it was like I had invited Sumantra and the film into the inner courtyard of my life. You know, it was really like, okay, I've decided to do this film and I'm inviting you right within the courtyard. So for me, that was, I think, something which really yeah, stood out. Yeah, it, it was just happened, you know, at home. For me, that was very special. 
Beautiful. Shumantra ji, can you recollect or do you, can you share with well, us would, like one really... That, 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 that was a very special moment because, you know, when one starts a journey without really knowing the person or the art form, and I neither knew Malavika nor Bharatnatyam when I started the journey, you don't, and you know that you're going to give two or three years of your life to it. You don't know whether you've taken the right decision. That was the moment I knew I had taken that the right decision. Wow. So it was very important. Lovely. Um, you know, um, um, Malvika, ji, uh, Malvika ji, when I interviewed you for the cues uh, last year, you, you, know, you talked about how you've traveled far. Uh, as a dancer, right? And you talked about how, uh, you know, um, dance has come to mean so many different things and how, you know, your relationship with dance evolves every year, right? So I'm curious about, like, when you look back at the film, do you feel like uh, there's some layers of your relationship, current relationship with dance that um, the film perhaps does not include? Do you feel like you've traveled a little more in your dance, in your journey of dance that you know, that, um, mm -hmm. yeah, I know, I think, you know, Akhila, a very, um, a sort of a very big, not a turning point, but a milestone in my uh, dance journey was when my mother passed away. Um, because she, as I said, was everything and she was the pillar and, um, you know, she was my pilgrim partner. We traveled and journeyed on several pilgrimages uh, together. So when she passed away, I was uh, completely shattered. And uh, for several months, I did not dance. I could not dance. I did not want to dance. I did not want to do an I didn't want to do, I didn't want to hear the music. I didn't want anything. I was in, I kind of retreated into like, silence, you know, which, and after that, I found that somehow the spirit of dance came back. You know, it sort of lifted me, lifted me back out of this, this rather uh, deep gorge I had gone into. And when it lifted me up, I just found it became more intense. So I think what I've done in the last uh, seven years is really my dance is an intensity and I think also a freedom. I just feel mm. free. I feel free to do what I wish to do. I feel free to use the, my body the way I want to. Somehow it's like now or never. So just dance yeah. and dance and dance as much as I want and the way I want to dance, you know, I don't want to be uh, held in now. You know, it's like you see meadows, you just see, you know, it's like you want just space and you want to just discover and so dance has become like a beautiful intense yes and i'm just loving it yes yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. i am going to ask you a question like like tell me honestly how many times have you watched this film who are you asking have i watched i'm asking you shumantra um, i'm asking you this question me. yeah you innumerable times because as a filmmaker a you you need to do that to get to yeah. the film to start with Absolutely. and then um, you know one has shown it in many many situations where it was expected that you would not walk out of your own film so one uh -huh. has uh, one has watched it many times yes right so uh, uh, when you when you do that do you sometimes feel that you could have done this bit a little differently do you feel like oh, i wish i had said this as well because obviously you 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 know it's seven years now you 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 your friendship has grown you know? yeah. well that, i think every film no film is perfect so every time you watch a film obviously you see defects you see things that could be done better but um I'm not sharing that information. Are you mad? No, I'm not going to tell you what I don't like. But what, what happens is that you learn, obviously, from each thing that you do. And those learnings go on to the next film. So you get to do certain right. things differently and perhaps better in the next film. But would I want to change stuff? No, not, not really. And if I did, I wouldn't take it. So there. Lovely. 
just one last question before I, I uh, you know, invite our audiences to ask questions. Will there be a part two of the unseen sequence? Would you, I mean, are you thinking about it? Would you, have you ever talked about it? I mean, e either of you could respond to that. Malvika, let her respond. Would you? Well, now that you're talking about it, perhaps we should talk about it. I don't yeah. think we're okay, really awesome. about it so far, but you've certainly uh, put a seed of an idea. Uh, which possibly will germinate at some point. We don't know. We have to discuss stuff. I don't know. Perhaps. Lovely. Um, I think so I'm going to. I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't want to make another film, but what we are doing is a variation of that, which is that we are now collaborating on Malavika's dances, which is a very interesting, very different thing. So it's not as if that story ended with the film which is part of what your question is. People want sequels because they don't want the story to end. The story hasn't ended. Exactly. Love. And, and I hope it continues for a long time now. Thank you so much for so generously uh, sharing such um, fantastic insights and stories uh, about the Unseen Sequence. I'm going to um, try and read out some of the questions that we've already got from our audiences. Um, there is a question, um, from um, Sinduja. Okay, but I think she's asking the question that I did. She says, um, Shumantraji and Malvika ji, the film was absolutely delightful and inspiring at many levels. When you kind of re-watch or revisit the idea, is there anything that you would want to add or edit from the film? But I think we talked about that, so I'm going to skip that. Um, we have a comment that says, uh, Malvika ji elevates dancing to a completely different level. She's just outstanding. Yeah, we've discussed that. Um, there's a question from Rama Vaidinathan. Um, she says, Malaka, did you re-choreograph your dance to suit the camera angles? Oh, no, never. And I think Malaka and um, uh, Shumantraji could respond to this. No, 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 no. We didn't ever plan it that way. It was dance was dance. And... Um, what I would have shared with Sumantra were, say, rehearsals. So, you know, he would have seen some of my rehearsals. But after that, it was very much uh, left to him, uh, Rama, for, uh, to film it the way he, he thought he should film it. So, no, to answer your question, we didn't really plan any camera angles at all. Um, I didn't see that happening. I, Sumantra should uh, take it up from here. Okay. Well. I planned every camera angle uh, because that's what you do as a filmmaker. Sorry, but we, uh, as I was saying, I planned every camera angle because that's what you do as a filmmaker. But were the, was she dancing for my camera? No. My camera was there to record her mm -hmm. as she danced. And that is the decision I took uh, even before the film began. I didn't want, because I'd seen a couple of things with uh, documentaries on dancers and I felt that the very often the camera got in the way, the setting got in the way of what the dancer was wanting to say because there is a need for the filmmaker sometimes and this requires great rehearsal, great effort and some amount of money to get it right. The filmmaker wants to be a filmmaker and so he wants to move his camera, he wants to edit, he wants to do this, he wants to and sometimes, given the paucity of time that we have in which to pull this off, it doesn't work. It just gets in the way. The other thing is I did not want, as would have to have happened if it was dance for the camera, is she would have to stop and start. I would say, oh mm -hmm. my God, that probably didn't work out. You'll have to do that bit again. Or that crane movement wasn't good for me. You'll have to do that again. Or the focus went off. You'll have to do that for me again. And that would mean that that dance would be in bits and pieces as all things done for film is. That's the nature of film. You do bits and pieces and make it seamless. But here I wanted to capture something that was already seamless and energetic and had a kind of frisson to it because of uh, the audience. And that excitement of a live performance is what I hoped um, would make up for me, you know, not, not sort of staging it for myself. Lovely. I hope that thank you so you. much. Uh, 
Yeah, sure. Um, there's a question from uh, uh, Ms. Lakshmi Bandlamudi, who uh, says that she wrote a scholarly chapter um, called Dancing in the Sky of Consciousness. Um, this, is, this is a question for Shimantraji. And she says, as a filmmaker, what materials were you looking for to be inspired? You know, I think the, the, for a filmmaker and a, and a filmmaker with no knowledge of the art form, what you look for is everything. So you read, you look at articles, you look at old photographs, you look at films, you look at rehearsals, you look at other people's dance. And that research process is what allows you to uh, begin to ask the right questions, I hope. Then you go out and film, and that is acquiring materials. It's nothing more than acquiring materials. And then you sit and edit, and that's where you begin to find answers. So you start with a process that asks questions and refines those questions and gives nuance to questions. Then you go out, and because of those questions, you shoot stuff that you are, at the back of your mind, the questions are still playing out. And then when you sit and edit, you're finding answers because you started off with questions. So that, that's my process. Right. Um, Shumantraji, there's one question for you. And then I'm, there's also a question for Malvikachi. It's really about, you said that when you set off making this film, you didn't know any, you didn't know Malvika Sarukai and you didn't know Bharatanatyam. Um, what seven, ten years later, nine years later, seven years later, um, what have you learned about dance? What have you been your key takeaways um, about like Bharatanatyam and the dance of Malvika Sarukai? I think my key takeaway is of the dance of Malvika Sarukai, uh, not of Bharatanatyam, because uh, uh, you know filmmakers gain enough information and knowledge that allows them to make a film. They do not devote their lives to a particular art. I made a film on Ustad Zakir Hussain, a fairly well-known tabla player. Does that mean I know anything about the tabla? No, I don't. Because my job is not to go out and play tabla or be knowledgeable about it. My, film, my job is to be empathetic to a person who, who has already done all of this. So I don't know anything about Bharatanatyam. Even today, I say with a sense of shame on Facebook. But I do know... <laughs> a lot about the dance of Malavika Sarukai because I've watched it exceedingly closely, repeatedly, and have had the good fortune of collaborating on her dance in the last five years. And what about her dance have I discovered? I've discovered, I think, what I miss in a lot of dancers, the ability to inhabit the moment with truth. And when you do that, I don't care what you're dancing. I don't care what you're saying. I don't care what you're performing. But if you can inhabit that moment with truth and not repetition or cliche, then you have my full and undivided attention. Right. Um, Malvika Ji, could you tell us, like, um, by virtue of uh, this process of filmmaking, um, you know, what are some of the technical aspects of filmmaking that you sort of became familiar with? Technical aspects of filmmaking? Oh, I don't know if I can, yeah, like, I don't know if I can say I became familiar with the uh, technical aspects. All I can say is, you know, uh, when Sumantra films, it is very unobtrusive. And I never felt that I was being looked at or, you know, um, and that I had to show my best angle or I had to, you know, have the best kind of image of myself being portrayed. But I felt I could be truly myself and I could say what I wanted to say. And um, he took care of the filming. So I really didn't get into that. And um, I was too, I think, absorbed in dancing or speaking or talking or sharing to really uh, think of technical aspects of filming. Um, and, but, you know, to just connect with the point which uh, Samantha made earlier, mm -hmm. the sense of inhabiting the moment, I think it, I speak about it when, you know, in that um, a wonderfully silent sequence in the, on, in the woods in Winterthur after the, uh, in the Timaka story, when I say, 
when you touch a sense of treeness, and I've used that word, and often because I feel that is that that process allows me to be honest. If I can touch that, then I am honest. And uh, that has been a kind of philosophy which has followed me over the years, you know, uh, because everything I talk about is experienced. It's just my own uh, journey in dance. It, it isn't something that I've read in the book, which I'm trying to translate into dance. Rather, it starts in the body, in the mind, in the being. And that's what becomes dance. And uh, over the years, I've just learned to articulate it. You know, I, right. I was never, uh, I was never really a, a speaker and it's, uh, apparently my mother used to tell me that for the first four years of my life, I never spoke. I never spoke. And then she said, suddenly one day I said a lot of things. So I feel perhaps I, I should really just be the dancer and not speak so much, but we, we have got used to now articulation. But I hope my the language of dance articulates really. I think that's most important. Yeah. Right. Um, so there's a really interesting question from Arvind Kumaraswamy, and he says, uh, uh, "And um, what you really intend the audience? Uh, what is your intent that the audience needs to take away from watching this film? What would you like the audiences to take away from this film?" Is am I? I think, uh, Sorry, who are you asking? Are you asking me? Both of you are could you respond. Me? No, Shumantra ji, you could you could you could respond, and then Mala Malavika ji could add also add her inputs. You know, um, it's very difficult to second guess an audience, and I don't want to do that. So I I think audiences are not a homogeneous crowd. There mm -hmm. are individuals yeah. in that audience. So it depends on what is the background of that individual. How much does she or he know about Bharatanatyam? Is he a dancer? Is she a dancer? Does, is there no knowledge at all? And based on that will be different um, uh, reactions to the film. So there's not a single thing that I wish to take away. But the intention of the film is to explore Bharatanatyam through the art of Malavika Sarukai, which is the baseline of the film. And one of the things that I did in terms of structure, if you now think about it, is I moved from the story of Bharatanatyam, which is how the film begins, to the language of Bharatanatyam. So from story to language. And one hopes that the audience takes away a multiplicity of, of things and is engaged by the film is interested in the dance form, is excited by the art that he or she is watching. That's the most one can hope for. And uh, downloads my film and watches it again. So the film, those who'd like to own and possess a copy, and I'm going to make this announcement one last time at the end as well. A uh, high resolution uh, version of the film is available for download at gumroad.com, gumroad.com, G-U-M. ROAD.com. Uh, Manvika ji, would you respond to that question as well before I ask you a couple of more questions? Okay, so let's go ahead. Um, there is a question from Shubhamani and she wants to know, can you share with us the location of the scene with the Devadasi dancers? Uh, where was that shot? Mantraji, could you I wish that? I had so much. I wish I had so much money to go out to temples, light it, and shoot. <laughs> this is all the cheating that a filmmaker does. Um, so that is a back plate, which means it, the, there's a photograph of the temple. The dancer is shot against a green mat, which is a green background, and then the two are composited or put together to give you the impression that I had more money than I did. <laughs> Okay, wow. Um, there's one question for Shumantra ji. Uh, what has Shumantra brought into this film from his earlier films? Is there a Ghoshal brand like connective tissue in your films, a lead motive to your work? Um, 
Well, um, the film I made before this was 25 years ago. So I would be very hard pressed to hang on to a leitmotif for that long. But if there is anything that uh, connects my work, it is that there are two or three things that connect my work. One is that it is invariably about the arts and artists. And B is I love working with people who are photogenic and articulate because then my work is done. So there was Zakir and then there's Manavika. And the third film I made had Shabana and Jago Dattavid. So I'm safe. Yeah. Lovely. <laughs> Um, there's a question from Mohan Apriyan and he'd like to know what is the one thing that you think in hindsight that you missed covering in the film? Shumantraji and then I'll ask uh, Malavika ji as well. I will pass this to Malavika because she knows what I have missed. I don't know what I have missed. I thought I got everything. <laughs> um. I would have wished if it was um, if it was at all possible that we had more documentation uh, with my mother. I think you know she was such a precious uh, I mean so precious to my dancing that um, I wish we had more documentation, but the trouble was that she was already not too well, and uh, we couldn't um, get her to speak as much as I would have liked. You know, I think that would have, um, if we had her participation as well, I think it would have uh, given a more dimension uh, to the dancer I am because frankly, she, you know, influenced me in so many ways. Um, and she was pivotal to what I did. And I think having her speak about dance, speak about my journey would have given a wonderful, uh, you know, dimension to to the film that i miss but then you know we couldn't do it yeah so we did what we could and i'm grateful for that i'm just so grateful that we did get her on film yes it must be very and, special every time you watch right and and and, and the film is dedicated to her it starts right. off yeah yeah with her and her memory yeah that's right um ramya ramnarayan um, says, um, Malak, I'm a huge fan of your work. Thank you for your contributions to the dance world as an artist. You've inspired many of us through decades. Are you working on any new projects that you've always wanted to explore? Well, it's so nice to have all these young dancers in different parts of the world, you know, who have seen the film. And it's really great that, you know, Alap has put it up, really, Akila, too you know, just make this possible so that so many people view it and, uh, you know, share the experience because so many dancers and artists have um, ideas and common things we want to share or we look at and we're inspired by. Um, you know, I just realized that over the last, uh, I think, 30 years when I've been doing my choreography, I have done some 15 solo uh, productions, thematic ones, solo, and I've also done two ensemble creations. So I think luckily for me, the mind and the being and the body is still active and excited and, you know, it's, it's still pulsating. So yes, I do yeah. want to create, I, you know, I recently presented uh, something which was very, I think, very brave and courageous of me to do was uh, uh, the battle within, which is uh, inspired by the Bhagavad Gita. And it was, um, again, I said, a very brave because I was doing two male characters and uh, it's, a, it's tough to, uh, to interpret philosophy. But however, I tried and attempted and learned a lot, learned a lot through just working on this production. But yes, my mind is thinking already of something else I want to do. So we are working, we are thinking. And so hopefully we, we present more work once this strange and surreal time of the lockdown and what the world is going through and once we sort of step across it and and hope when we can just look back and say yes it was so we hope to really come back with more performances and uh, something which lifts the spirit because i think it's important for all of us to to be inspired 
not only about our life in, per, in, in particular, but inspired about life itself. So I think that's, that's where perhaps I'm heading. I don't know. <laughs> right. Um, there's a question from Anushka Subramaniam. She says, mm -hmm. uh, Malvika Ji, the woman gave us a glimpse into the way in which you've made your dance your own. How can we as young dancers discover individuality in our dance and stay honest to the essence of Bharatanatyam? I think, you know, Anushka, I really think that's a very, very, very important, very significant question that, you know, we have to ask ourselves as, as dancers, as artists all the time. It, it isn't a question we ask and then we, we find an answer and we put it away. I think, you know, individuality, I think it's important to find it. And it's really about having conviction in what we do as dancers, you know, and we have to stay the course. And of course, nowadays, you know, we're influenced by so many things and social media and we see a lot of images, which is fine, which is terrific. But I think it's also about how much can you see, you know, and if you hold, it's like, you know, if the seed is strong and holds the ground, you get a tree. And if the seed has to grow and nurture and become a tree, it has to hold ground. And I think dancers also need to ask yourselves, you know, because 30s is a, or 20s is a wonderful time to ask these big questions. Uh, because I really believe tradition should be questioned. Um, because only then you can make it your own. Um, otherwise, it's just something else that someone has given to you, which is very important. Sampradaya, parampara, everything is important. But you have to ask yourself the difficult questions of saying, what do you do with tradition? And you have to have, you have mm -hmm. to think about it so that you have some view about it, insight. It's not a view which you have to articulate to anybody or explain to them, but you need to know why you dance, what you dance. And so you've got to ask, have some people asking you the question. And when they, you know, sometimes it's difficult. I know when I'm mentoring, um, you know, Maitri or Jotsna or Karuna, I ask them some questions and I, and I know it's difficult. But you know what? Creativity is difficult. It isn't something which happens like, you know, you just have all the answers, the whole composition falls in place and you're ready to go. It is step-by-step -step questioning. And um, in my mentoring sessions, it is about, you know, questioning deeply and saying, asking them why they're doing something. And I think that helps them define who they are and helps them find their individual voice. Because I think more than anything else, I really believe, and I just, you know, this is a fantastic opportunity to speak about it, is that, if we want excellence in dance, in Gen Next and the millennials, they have to differentiate themselves with excellence and their own voice. And that means asking difficult questions and not finding the answers always. I think that that's also part of it. You, you can't find all the answers, but we, we struggle on. And taking risks is a part of, of growth. Taking risks is a part of evolving yourself as, as a dancer. I don't know. I hope it's helped. Um, I hope some dancers have heard this. And, you know, I hope it helps because it, it, the, the world of classical dance is really quite uh, perplexing and quite complex. And we have to somehow na navigate, you know, which means yeah. we need faith and we need conviction. We have to hold ground. Um, can we do about two, two more questions? Uh, would you be okay with that? Shimantruji? Yeah. We are all locked down. What can I say? Ask 20. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, I, uh, this is from uh, my colleague, Subiksha, who's also a young dancer, works with me, Nala. She says, uh, Malvika ma'am is, is a person who's very particular about the light design in her performances. Um, was there an impact? And if yes, how did her experience with working with Shimantraji enhance her knowledge of these technical aspects? Understanding of light. Well, I think, you know, I think the way we light for a stage, a theater performance, 
and the way Sumantra was lighting for film is very different. Hmm. You know, I think it's it's really very very different. So I don't think one can compare it. Hmm. You know, both both uh, the the kind of lighting we do. Um, but what I did learn was, you know, soft lighting, and often in on stage performances, we kind of because we want the expression to be seen, we put a lot of light from the front. But I think um, what I did sort of observe uh, was that the lighting, when it's softer, I think it sort of allows for more expression in a strange way, more expression to be seen. And um, and I were pretty much left the lighting, the whole thing to Sumatra. I didn't really, he, he is very particular and I think an aesthetic. They you know it mattered a lot to him, so it was really his call on how he did the lighting. So, yeah. Okay, um, uh, Shumatraji, there's a question for you from um, Rutuja, and she wants to know how did you decide to take particular events, incidents, and situations from Malavika Ji's whole life journey? Because honestly, there is so much to showcase from her artistic journey. So actually, when I had that question, which I skipped, how does a filmmaker actually sieve through the wealth of content and actually say that I want to, you know, do this and perhaps let this go? Like, how did you do that? And I think um, that's probably what Rutuja also wants to know. Well, I think uh, it's not easy. It's not an easy job. And I think most documentaries, um, actually work or fail because of the editing and how well you've connected dots mm -hmm. but um i think um to put it simply what what do i look for first of all i have an overall arching idea that i'm working towards so that idea is that i have three narratives one is the story of bharat natyam one is the journey of malavika sarukai and one is me uh with my own hesitancies about uh, Bharat Natyam's language, about its complexities, about the myths it's dealing with, all of that. So these need to interplay in a way that make it, keep it interesting. But to answer the question with uh, perhaps a, a, in a more simplistic way, rather than the complexity, which is what editing is, you need to keep two things in mind. One is the thrust of the narrative, and the second is the pull of the emotion. So mm. this, these are, this is the push and pull that you need to balance. Sometimes when you get stuck with an emotional moment or something that feels good or looks wonderful, you've lost out on the push of the narrative. So the balance is between the push of the narrative and the pull of emotion. And you get to do that, or I get to do it because everybody makes films differently. And you know, every time you listen to a filmmaker, you begin to feel, oh, that's the way to go. No, it's not. That's my way. And it's not mm -hmm. the way of hundreds and thousands of other far better filmmakers. So right. in in my case, this is how I work. And therefore it means editing, re-editing, going back, rethinking, all of which becomes clear if I just give you one fact. 95% mm -hmm. of what I shot is not in the film. What you're seeing is five percent. That is the importance of it. Wow. Lovely. Um, there's one more, couple of more questions. Um, there's one scene in the film uh, where uh, Malavika ji is rehearsing and her mother is watching, where she's doing a very free, playful bird, and her mother is responding with the exact same spirit. Just to mention that it was very short yet a very significant scene in the film to show the sort of um, anchoring and support her mother provided in her career and her life. Ma'am, would you like to just talk about uh, that particular scene? And of course, we know that your mother was, you, you know, you talked about how she was like a partner in your journey in that sense. But could you just respond to that particular question? Well, I think, you know, in that, uh, it was in, in, you know, the sense of birdness and the sense of flight and i think it was just it was just a free moment it wasn't really a very natya than me kind of movement which i was doing i was just enjoying myself i was just turning around 
And it was just, you know, sometimes we need to share a simple delight. You know, it's, there are times when, you know, when I've discussed with my mother, I mean, she would see every rehearsal uh, for all these years. She never missed a rehearsal. And uh, she would be very critical of the kind of dancing I'm doing. She'd sit with her a notepad and she'd look at my rehearsals and she'd be making points, you know, where I could have changed, where it looks better, where I should have edited. So we had very, uh, very, sort of say, uh, long and deep discussions on dance. But I think in that, what uh, Samantha captured was just a simple delight, a simple delight between mother and daughter, a simple delight of meeting through dance. You know, it, it, it wasn't about saying too many things. It was just really enjoying the moment. Yeah. Which, I, which indeed made it very, you know, very, it kind of stood out in the film. I would completely Absolutely. agree with it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, there's a young dancer, Nisha Subhash. This is not this is not a question connected with the film per se, but she says, um, congratulations, please make more such films. It's a different class of inspiration, especially for young dancers. But her question really is to Malavika Ji, and she says, ma'am, can you suggest some tips to be completely absorbed throughout the stage performance without any distraction. I think Malavika Ji's screen has frozen. So we will just wait for a couple of seconds, minutes for her to, for her internet to Can I um, uh, can I request? I what yes, okay. yes, I can. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Welcome back. Uh, you know, um, I thought that was an interesting question. Uh, not, I mean, I was going to ask you that question as my final question about this whole, you know, this so many distractions that all of us have sort of, you know, using the digital platform. But she particularly wants to know how does a dancer remain completely absorbed through a stage performance without any distractions? In a stage performance, so I didn't get the question. Yeah. In a stage yeah. performance? Yeah. Yeah. How does a dance, some tips for young dancers to remain okay. completely absorbed throughout the stage performance without any distractions? I think it's just being completely absorbed yeah, in the dance itself not to worry about the audience or the lights or the sound. I mean, just to keep that away and to give your full focus to the dance. I think then that gets you through. That gets you through. Right. Um, I think we've covered almost all the questions that came our way. And of course, there were many, uh, you know, comments and stuff. But thank you so much, uh, Malvika Ji and Shumantra Ji for... Uh, you know, uh, taking time off and like um, sharing uh, insights on the film. Um, I must say there's one more question, if you don't mind. Um, Pritam Das, a uh, dancer from Delhi, uh, says, uh, Malvika Ji, I'm curious about the process of your choreography and what inspires you to choose a particular idea. Oh, that's a big question and we'll have to do a whole series again, Akila, for that. Yeah, to sort of really answer it in detail. But if I had to sort of just, um, you know, make a highlight of it, it would be what inspires me? You know, what are the impulses that come into my life? What do I see? It could be a painting. It could be, um, it could be a person. It could be anything. So there are things which, you know, just influence me and then somehow it stirs within me and then I keep keep at it. And then I've, or it could be something I read, like the Maka was a story I read and then I made choreography. So there are many impulses and it doesn't really, everything doesn't uh, germinate in the dance room or in my umbrella or my studio. It really is all about life itself, what I'm seeing, how I'm living, the people I speak to, the books I read. It's so, it's so many things. And uh, from that, at some point, we make a choreography, we make, we make a dance. Because I really think I dance because I have something to say. And I say it with dance, so that's it. Yeah, 
Thank you so much for such an engaging, and like I've said this before to you, Malvika Ji, and I always feel so like um, inspired after a conversation with you. I remember the queues took us about three hours, but it was so fascinating. And Shumantra Ji, thank you so much. I thoroughly enjoyed like uh, speaking with you and doing our trial Zoom sessions with you. So thank you so much. Um, and thank you everyone who logged in and uh, watched this conversation. Um, the conversation will be available on our lab's Facebook page for the next 24 hours. Uh, we will also be sharing a recording of the conversation on our YouTube page. So those who missed it today or won't be able to catch it tomorrow can view it on our YouTube uh, channel as well. We're also going to be, um, uh, the film is also going to be available on Alap's YouTube um, page until tomorrow, Wednesday, 9 p.m. IST. Uh, before that, quickly, if you want to own a copy of the film, like I said before, you can download a high resolution version of it at gumroad.com. Um, I highly recommend you do that. Um, thank you again. And for uh, everyone in India, good night. And um, for the others, have a great day. Uh, thank you, Malavika ji. Thank you, Shumantra ji. And thank, thank, you, thank you, you, team Ala, for thank all you. the technical aspects. Thank, thank you. you. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye -bye. And good luck thank for you. all Bye. your other programs. Yes. Take care. <laughs> thank you. Yes, thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.